The CARES Act that was passed in March 2020 didn't just approve stimulus checks for Americans. It approved a slew of new eligible HSA and FSA items. I've got a list of 10 that you should be buying right now and where you should be buying them. Welcome to Modern Frugality. My name is Jen. I am a personal finance writer turned amateur YouTuber to help people navigate with what's going on financially and build upon their finances once they get them under control. If you're a subscriber, thanks so much for stopping by and listening to this. If you're not, hit that button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. I will be making more videos on topics like this for the months to come to help as much as I can. Today I'm sharing what I think are the 10 most relevant HSA and FSA items that you should be buying right now. There are a lot of them and even more that the CARES Act uh, enacted to be eligible, but there is a small portion that I think everyone should be paying attention to and have on hand in their medicine cabinets. Why am I telling you to buy stuff right now? I'm not being insensitive. I know 6.6 .6 million people just applied for unemployment. It's crazy. But nobody knows if they're going to get sick or when. I tried to look for reasonable data or predictions and everybody is all over the place. Nobody can agree how many people are going to get sick and everyone's talking about death, but nobody's talking about the reality of just getting sick. Not even with what's going on right now, but just in general. So if there was ever a time to prepare for the worst and hope for the best, this is it. And you have to use the money in your HSA and FSA for these eligible items. So this is really the time to use it. If your income is limited or you anticipate it going down in the future, use these funds now to prepare and save your other money for more important things that aren't covered by an HSA or FSA. Don't go run out and buy these things from Walmart or order them off Amazon. This is a time that you can be helping local small businesses that sell these items local pharmacies, independent pharmacies. If you have the opportunity to buy these products from a small business owner, please do that because you're investing in local business, you're investing in people in your community, and you can be confident in spending your money uh, and not feel like you're wasting it maybe on eating at a restaurant or, or ordering a drink at a bar or something. These are things you need and you can use them to help support your community in this way. And if you have a small business that you're supporting, let us know in the comments where you are restocking your medicine cabinet and if they have online ordering because sometimes you can't go out and buy things. So if they have online ordering, even better. Before we get into what these items are, how do you buy them? because the CARES Act actually retroactively approved these purchases to January 1st, 2020. So if you have receipts for any of these eligible items or even other eligible items that I'm not talking about, you can submit a claim with the bank or account where your HSA or FSA is at and submit that with the itemized receipt and you can get reimbursed for those purchases. So that's if you've already bought it. Moving forward, you can do the same thing if it's not an approved um, local drugstore or store, then you can file a claim and submit itemized receipts. But you can also use your FSA debit card or your HSA debit card if you have it, if you know where it is, you can use that card at approved stores and pharmacies uh, and you can just ask the pharmacy or store if they are approved and then you don't have to go through the hassle of filing a claim and getting reimbursed those are automatically taken out of the account 
On to the 10 things that you need to get right now. So the first one is not something you can buy in a store, um, but it may be the one that most people do, especially those 6.6 million who just applied for unemployment. It is your COBRA premiums. So for those who don't know, COBRA is the federal law that states that if you are laid off for some reason, you are eligible to extend the healthcare plan that you had with your employer and pay for it out of your own pocket. So it is more expensive this way because not only are you paying your portion that you were paying anyway, you're now also paying the employer's portion that they were sponsoring and a 2% administration fee. So COBRA is not ideal, but if for some reason you need to stay on your health insurance plan, if you have a medical condition that doesn't allow you to get cheaper insurance elsewhere, then you can pay for your COBRA premiums out of your HSA. Unfortunately, this isn't the same with an FSA, but if you have an HSA, you can use the funds to pay for COBRA because it's important to point out that other health care plans, you cannot pay those premiums from your HSA. It's only your COBRA coverage. Second is aspirin, good old fashioned aspirin. Aspirin is a pain reliever, fever reducer, and if you don't have it in your cabinet right now, you need to have some that is not expired. Y'all, it's time to look in your medicine cabinets and like get out all those expired medicines that you just keep holding on to. It's time to get them out. And we need to restock with new, fresh, non-expired medicines. So aspirin will help with fevers. Fever is one of the main first symptoms of this illness. So you'll want to have something on hand when that comes up to lower that fever. And uh, aspirin is a great choice and is now eligible for FSA and HSA reimbursement. Uh, that wasn't the case. All over-the-counter medicines had to have a prescription in order to be eligible. And the CARES Act made those expenses, those over-the-counter expenses, deductible. Third is over-the-counter pain medications. There are three main types of over-the-counter pain relievers. The first is acetaminophen, which is known as Tylenol. The second is ibuprofen, also known as Advil. And the third is naproxen, uh, which is also known as Aleve. They all serve a different purpose and are for a different reason. Not all of them are very relevant for what's going on right now, but for all of them, you can get the generic brand. It works the same as the name brand. Save yourself some money. Acetaminophen reduces pain and fever, similar to aspirin, but aspirin also has the uh, blood clot relieving factor. Ibuprofen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. That means it reduces pain by reducing inflammation. So that one is better for injuries like a, like a sprain or, or a strain. And then naproxen is also a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, but it's more long lasting. So where Advil or ibuprofen is really good for an injury, an acute injury, then naproxen is good for, better for more chronic pain. So you can see how those are a little different, that acetaminophen and aspirin are probably the best ones to get right now. But you should know the difference between all of them because you don't want to waste your money buying all of this like one drug when the one drug next to it can treat what you're going through better and cause you to buy less of it so you save some money. And I'm not a doctor, but all the information I just told you, readily available on WebMD, it's very common knowledge. But it goes without saying, but I will say it, you need to talk to your doctor or any doctor about what you personally have going on to see if any of those are gonna be bad for you or conflict with medications you're already taking, because some do. So know the difference, 
but then also know how the differences apply to you. Fourth, everyone needs to have a cough medicine on hand. So that's another one that you can keep in there and it is usually expired by the second time you need it. So check to see, make sure you have a full bottle, make sure it's not expired, and whatever your preference is on that one, there are a ton of them. Same goes with sore throat pain relief. Throat lozenges, throat sprays, those are eligible for deduction from your FSA and HSA account. So make sure that you have whatever you prefer and whatever's in your medicine cabinet is not expired. Next is thermometers. So now thermometers and thermometer probe covers are eligible items. If you feel like you need probe covers, you can still get them on Amazon. Thermometers are a little harder to find, but go, go where you can find them. That's not somewhere where you can be um, picky right now because a lot of places I was looking thermometers are hard to find but in order to see what level your fever is at to know if it's just maybe a cold sickness or something else you need to be able to um, test your fever to see what level it's at so definitely get yourself a thermometer and right now might be the time to get some probe covers because you definitely don't want to be spreading those germs. The safer you can be and the more disposable your items can be, the better right now. I usually don't say that. I don't love disposable items, but right now it's clutch. Seven, and this one is probably my favorite. Finally, menstrual items are now FSA and HSA eligible. It's been a long time coming, ladies. That includes tampons, pads, liners, cups, sponges, anything having to do with your menstrual cycle, and that would include over-the-counter medications to treat the pain. Those are now eligible. So if you have bought anything this year, if you have the itemized receipt, definitely submit a claim for those. and. To make it easy, you can stock up for what you will need for the year right now using your HSA funds. That way you don't have to worry about it later when you're worrying about so many other things. Just when you're putting it in order now, get everything else at the same time, take more stress off of your plate, and ladies, get those items taken care of. This has been a long time coming, so don't let this amazing like inclusion in this act go to waste definitely get those things in your FSA and this would be a this would be a reason if you have an FSA available to you to start contributing to one because you know you'll always use this these types of items if you know you'll always use them then you might as well be putting tax-free dollars into your FSA uh, to to offset that cost a little bit. I, I'll post a link in the description talking about why HSAs and FSAs are so important. I didn't mention that before, but if you have one, I mean, it doesn't matter why they're important to contribute to right now. What matters is if you have one, you should be using it if you need it. The next three items are not essentials, but they are good to have on hand if you want to support a small business in your area and you have all the other stuff, it's not expired, uh, but you just want to help some local businesses that might need it, or if you need to order online, what have you. So the next one is sunscreen and sun care products. These are also newly included by the CARES Act as HSA and FSA eligible. So any sunscreen with SPF, any sunburn ointment or lotion, summer is coming and uh, we may not be able to go to the beach, but I bought a kiddie pool and those are still available online. Trust me, I checked. If you have a kiddie pool and you anticipate being out in the sun, get yourself some sunscreen from a small business and use your FSA or HSA dollars there. Ninth is 
contacts and glasses and associated costs with them. So contact solution, uh, cases for your contacts, whatnot. I need some more contacts. I wear contacts. If you see me on Instagram, you probably see me in the glasses. But one day a week I put in my contacts and I'm definitely going to be getting more of those and more contact solution. Last is not tangible, but it is still important to note that sales tax and shipping and handling are eligible items. So if you have tax or shipping costs associated with any HSA or FSA eligible item, any shipping, handling, tax associated with them is deductible. Again, let me know if there is a place that you are doing your shopping from that is a small business that maybe us across the country who don't have access to smaller stores, maybe we can order online from. Leave that in the comments and uh, I will be sure to check out whatever links are posted. And don't forget to hit that button in the bottom right hand corner. Subscribe to the channel, it's free. I am doing a few videos a week for the foreseeable future. Most of them will be on topics like these. Some of them will be just money saving tips in general and you don't wanna miss any until you're super rich and wealthy, in which case, like, you don't need me, I'm, you're fine.